हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड मॉडर्न पीरियोडिक टेबल पीरियोडिक टेबल इज यूज इन ऑर्डर टू क्लासीफाई द एलिमेंट्स इन सम ग्रुप्स सो दैट वी कैन स्टडी देयर प्रॉपर्टीज एंड ऑल्सो कंपेयर द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ वन एलिमेंट विद अनदर वन दिस इज द मॉडर्न फॉर्म ऑफ पीरियोडिक टेबल विच वी यूज टूडे एंड दिस इज नोन एज मॉडर्न पीरियोडिक टेबल द पीरियोडिक टेबल कंटेन्स some column and some rows the columns are known as groups while the rows are known as periods there are total of 18 groups and seven periods in modern periodic table in modern periodic table all these elements which i have represented by red are metals that means you can see that all the metals are situated on left side of the periodic table while these blue ones are non metals that means that all the non metals except hydrogen are situated on right side of the modern periodic table these which are which i have represented by green are metalloids metalloids means those which show uh, the property of both metals and non metals so this is the modern periodic table overview now modern periodic table is based on a, a law which is known as modern periodic law which states that the periodic the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic numbers that means when we arrange the elements in increasing order of their atomic numbers what we see that the properties of elements are repeated periodically means the properties repeat after some interval and on this principle this periodic table is based in which the elements are arranged in increasing order of their atomic numbers and those elements which are present in in a particular column means in the same group have similar properties okay in periodic table elements have been classified on the basis of their electronic configuration these two first two groups are known as s block elements from group 2 or 3 to group 12 are known as d block elements while these from group 13 to 18 are known as p block elements and these two periods are known as f block elements now why by uh, what is the basis of this classification in s block elements if we write the, first of all as i told you the classification is based on electronic configuration so whenever we write the electronic configuration of the elements of s block what we find that the last electron enters s sub shell just see the example of lithium the, li uh, the atomic number of lithium is 3 and its electronic configuration is 1s2 2s1 this means the last electron is entering 2s orbital similarly if we write the electronic configuration of sodium what we find the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 again the last electron is entering to s orbital so whenever we write the electronic configuration of an element which belongs to s sub shell that means these sorry s orbital or uh, s block that means these two groups what we find that the last electron enters s sub shell similarly in d block elements when we write the electronic configuration of an element which block which belongs to d block we find that the last electron enters d sub shell just see the example of scandium the electronic configuration will be 1s2 2s2 2s6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d1 again the last electron is entering to a d orbital that is why it is d block element again it's obvious that in p block elements the last electron will enter to p sub shell just see the example of um, if you write the electronic configuration of boron it will be 1s2 2s2 2p1 the last electron is entering p sub shell so b so boron is a p block element again just see the example of another p block element say silicon electronic configuration of silicon will be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p2 the last electron is entering to p sub shell that's why it's a p block element so this was the classification based on 
electronic configuration. There is another group which is known as, which is F, uh, the elements are known as F block elements and these are situated outside the table. Now why they are situated out, outside the table, we'll discuss about it later. So, but for now, these are known as F block elements. Why? Because when we write the electronic configuration of any of these elements, we find that the last electron will then enter to an F, F subshell. So, on the basis of electronic configuration, the elements of the periodic table are class classified on in four groups. One is S block, another is P block elements, next is S block element, P block element, D block elements and F block elements. Okay. Again, the first group, elements of first group are known as alkali metals. Now, why alkali metals? Because these the hydroxides, hydroxides of these elements are strong alkali. If you see the example of sodium hydroxide, you know it is a strong base, strong alkali. That is why these all are known as alkali metal. Again, sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali. Potassium hydroxide is another strong alkali. And so is lithium hydroxide. So all hydroxides of these elements which belong to the first group are strong base, strong alkalines. That is why these are known as alkali metals. Okay, next, the group 2. The elements of group 2 are known as alkali earth metals. Now why? This is because again the hydroxides of these elements are also strong alkaline just like magnesium hydroxide which is an alkali. Hydroxides of the elements of second group will also be alkali but there is another property that these elements are found in earth crust that is why these are called alkali earth metals. Next is if we see boron, the group 13 elements are known as boron family. The term is, uh, the name of the group is based on the first element that is boron family. This one is carbon family. This is nitrogen family. This is oxygen family, which is also known as chelogens. All these elements of group 16 are called chelogens. Again, the elements of group 17, that is fluorine family are known as halogens. Now why, why halogens? This is because these are salt forming. Whenever they combine with metals, they form salts. Just like our common salt which is yeah, sodium chloride. Chloride is present on, is present in this group, group 17. That's why these all are known as halogens. Next is group 18, the last group. These are known as noble gases or inert gases. Why? This is because the electron they have fully stable electronic configuration. All the orbitals are completely filled, and that is why they do not participate in any reaction. That means they are inert and they are gases. They are found in gaseous state. So these are called yeah noble gases or inert gases. Now again the S block elements are all metals these are very uh, the atomic size is large why we'll discuss about this later the atomic size is large they are soft they are metals so they conduct electricity and yeah thermal conductivity is also present in these metals next is transition elements these are again reactive elements these elements of d block are known as transition elements these are again reactive elements and these are metals and they, uh, they form complex compounds. These groups, that is P block elements, are non metals. So they, are, they may be present as solid, liquid, or gas, depending on the, they are found in all the three states. While most of the elements of S block and D block are found in solid state because these are metals. Again, F block elements are also metals and they are radioactive. They are radioactive elements. Groups and periods have lots, on, lots of information hidden in them. We will uh, discuss about these all informations which we get from the period and groups in our next video in more detail. But here in a brief, I will tell you about one information which we get from group and period and that is about, okay, first group. group 
and period represent the number of shell of an element shell means principal quantum number number of orbital that is known as shell or energy level also all the elements of a particular period will have equal number of shells like if we talk about the first group elements uh, sorry the elements of first period there are two elements in first period and as because they are present in first period so these two have only one shell as you know the electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1s1 and that of helium is 1s2 both have only one shell that is first shell again when we move to next period there are eight elements and all the, these elements have two shells because these are present in second period similarly the elements of third period will have three shells and so on the number of shells is equal to the number of period in which they are present that means <coughs> all the elements of a period have equal number of shells while the number of shells increases down the group when we move from first period to next period the number of shell increase by one that is number of shell increases down the group and remains same in a period the next is about valency Valen what is valency valency is the number of electrons which are used which are by uh, a particular element for bond formation or they are used in a chemical reaction for bond formation the first thing is valence electron valence electron is the number of electrons present in valence shell that means outermost shell and that remain that increases along the period when we move from one group to another group to another group the number of valence electrons increases here the number of valence electron was one in this it becomes two in this it becomes three in this becomes four in this becomes five why we are not talking about these d block elements because these are special type of elements and they show variable valency plus one a particular element may of d block element may show three or four different different valences in different different compounds because these have some specific property we will discuss later about that for right now we are focusing on our representative elements representative elements are the s block elements and p block elements while these are known as transition elements and these are known as inter transition elements again here the number of valence electrons will be 3 here it will become 4 here it will become 5 6 7 8 and so on it was 1 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 then 6 then 7 and the number of valence electron becomes 8 that means stable configuration this was the number of valence electron that means electrons present in outermost shell the next thing is valency valency also varies along the period in starting it will be equal to the number of valence electron here the valence electron is one so it will so valency will also be one here again it will be two in boron in, in it will become three then it will become four the valency of carbon is four which is maximum valency after carbon it again starts reducing the valency of nitrogen becomes three that of oxygen becomes two that of fluorine becomes one and finally on inert gases it becomes zero because they do not participate in any bond formation so in a period first valency increases up to four and then it starts decreasing so we can predict the valency of a particular element by seeing at its position that is number of groups and that is known as group valency group valency of transition of s block element the first group is one group valency of second group is two group valency of 13th group is three that of 14th group is four and again it's three two one and then becomes zero the question is why these f block elements are present outside the main table actually these are known as first group is known as lanthanide second the uh, the first period is known as lanthanide the second is known as actinoid actually these belong to this position but why they are uh, they are present outside the table because if they are arranged at the their actual position within the table they just disbalance the properties we know that this is totally based on a situation according to which a particular group all the elements of particular particular group have similar properties but if these are placed 
at their position within the their actual position within the periodic table they disturb this periodicity and this order because of their some particular properties which we will discuss in next videos so that is why in order to continue for conti for continuation of the properties of the periodic properties these are just uh, represented outside the table and they are not included in the main table and these are known as inter transition elements there are two elements in first period 8 in second again 8 in third 18 in fourth and again 18 in fifth while 32 in sixth period including this lanthanoids and so in the seventh period uh, including octanoids so this was the overview of periodic table we will discuss the properties of s block d block p block elements in different chapter you have a, a topic known as s block elements one is known as p block element and another is d block elements we will discuss all these in when we'll go to those chapters but here we have to see an overview of the periodic table this was the overview of, of periodic table i hope these are clear to you thank you